Hey guys, Simon Bryson here, and today we're going to do a book review on The Atomic Habit by James Clear. Now, whenever I read a book, I follow the 80-20 rule, meaning that usually 20% of a book contains 80% of the useful information in it. And that's why so far, I've only read around 21.57% of this book, and I was like, okay, I'm going to read this much and find out if I want to read the entire book. But usually... What happens is maybe the book is trash or it might be great. And in reality, this book right here is not trash. It's a great book and that's why I'm doing a book review on it. But most importantly, by reading 20% of it, I actually found five things I want to share with you guys right now before I even finish the entire book. And in this case, I will finish it. And by the way, guys, usually once you get the core ideas and that 20%, whatever is left is usually just like, hey, stories and fragments to help you reiterate everything in your head so that we can remember it and then put it into practice. And that's why I'm going to continue reading this book. And by the way, guys, usually I never do this, but I actually like this book so much that I went out there and I actually bought like some of the other content, for example, like a journal and also the other journal he actually has available. So I basically bought all the content for this book right here because basically it's not like a book you read and then boom you read something you learn something but in reality it's a book you read put into action and it changes your entire life so if you want to buy this book i'll put a link down below but most importantly if you want to read this book like listen to it and in reality i put a link down below to audible and when you sign up you get two free books and if you cancel you still get to keep them so i recommend strongly this book right here and also the 80 20 rule book okay that book right there was also life-changing now by the way guys if you guys are new here i post videos every single day so make sure to also subscribe and hit the bell so you're notified on the top of that also destroy the like button now let's get started guys and talk about the five things i learned this book right here and let's start at the beginning now the first thing is this okay what is a habit and what is it made out of and how can you go ahead and actually change it to get what you actually want and the results you actually want in your life now the first thing is this okay to define a habit a habit is very simple to understand. A habit is just something you do over and over again and create a routine around. And the reason you actually create routines and habits is because whenever you have a habit, you use a lot less brain power and that way you're a lot more efficient when it comes to your energy, okay? And also your survival and everything on a biological level. Now, the core idea is this, okay? When it comes to this book, he breaks down a habit into four steps and how you want to take action to actually make a habit actually happen. The first step is basically the cue. What initiates the habit? The second step is basically the craving. What are you craving? And usually that's the reward you actually want. Then the third step is basically the response you do to get the reward you actually want to get. And the fourth is basically the reward you get for performing the habit you wanted to perform. So in reality, it's a quick way to get your brain to do things automatically and fast. And that way you don't take a lot of time and brain power to get done what you actually want to get done. Now, by the way, although this does sound like a long process, in reality, you do this every single day in fractions of seconds, okay? For example, whenever you walk into a dark room, that's a cue, right? So basically, you start craving to see exactly what the room is gonna look like when there's light there. So you start craving light. The response is you turn on the light switch, and then the reward is you get the light <laughs> in the room, right? So basically, you make the decision, that habit, in fractions of a second, and you don't even notice that's a habit. But in reality, it actually is a habit. Now, the good and the bad thing is this, guys, okay? The brain is not biased. So basically, once you have something you're actually doing, and it contains all those four things, the cue, the craving, response, and reward, your brain forms habits automatically as long as you keep doing it over and over again. Which means that whether it's a good habit or a bad habit, it doesn't care as long as it actually has all four of those condiments right there. So for example, a good habit might be, hey, I woke up, I start craving having a clean mouth. I go ahead and brush my teeth, my response. And then my reward is I have a clean mouth that smells and tastes very crispy, right? Awesome. But then the bad is that basically 
I feel stressed at work. That's my cue. I start craving a cigarette to then give me a relaxed state of mind or maybe to calm me down. So I go ahead and I go on smoke and then I basically get the reward of basically calming down and taking a break, which then means that basically you have good habits and bad habits and your brain does not care about them, okay? One can damage you extremely and the other one gives you no cavities and a clean mouth. So in reality, that's all it takes to actually start forming a habit, a good one, or a bad one, your brain does not care as long as it has those four factors right there. And by the way, guys, you guys might not know this, but a lot of companies use the same strategy to get you to basically go out there and use their apps and basically spend money on them. For example, whenever you have a phone, right? You have a phone right here, nothing's happening, but if it vibrates, right? Guess what you wanna do? You wanna start craving, why did my phone vibrate? Well, you see a notification from Instagram. So you wanna find out like, hey, what's going on? So you grab your phone, your response, and you go on Instagram and see what happened, and that is your reward. And before you know it, you spent hours on Instagram, okay? That's why companies love when you turn notifications on because basically it's the cue to initiate a habit, okay? That's why things work the way they work. Now, the second thing I actually learned in this book, guys, is basically when it comes to improving your life, how can you do it and actually do it in a simple way, easy way, less resistant way to then actually have those changes actually stick and actually help you in some way. And he talks about basically making tiny changes to actually help your entire life. And that's why it's called Atomic, tiny, tiny habits that are going to change your life forever. Now, the idea is very simple, guys, okay? He talks about the 1% rule, meaning that if every single day you actually improve by 1%, by the end of the year, you'll be actually 37 times better than you actually started off as. Now, in reality, whenever you're doing something by 1% every single day, usually you're not gonna see any changes for a while. So it works, for example, for the gym, right? Say, for example, you go to the gym every single day and you improve by 1%, you might not notice anything in the first month or two months or three months, but by the end of the year, you will see a change. The same goes, for example, with knowledge also. If you want to start reading books, don't start by saying like, hey, I'm gonna read 10 books today. Just start with one book and try to get all the way through it. And then after you're done with that one, read another one, another one, and another one. Before you know it, you have a lot of knowledge stored up. You're not gonna be a genius when you read the first book, but by the end of reading a ton of books, you'll actually be a lot more knowledgeable than you actually were in the beginning. And that's the core idea, okay? So in reality, when you think about atomic habits, think about compound interest. It's kind of like saying like, hey, whatever I do today, it might not show like a big effect, but in the long term, it's going to compound and you're going to see a massive increase in what you actually been doing. Like massive results, basically, okay? And the third thing I learned, you guys, is basically progress and making progress. And the idea is that progress is not linear, but it's actually a curve, right? So linear would be like this, a curve would be like this, right? And the whole thing is that basically whenever you plan out your progress, you think about like this, like, hey, I'm going to do this today, tomorrow I'll do this, and I'll keep going up, 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 and everything's gonna be fine. But in reality, progress is more like a curve. You do something like this, you might not see a change, but step by step, just by changing things, you start doing this and this. And this, and before you know it, you get to what your goal actually is and what you actually want to achieve. For example, it's kind of like a bamboo tree. You probably don't know this. I didn't know either. I'm not a farmer, neither are you probably. But the idea is that basically a bamboo tree, when you plant it and you water it, take care of it, you won't see it for the first five years. So it's kind of like, hey, you're working so hard on something, you don't see any results, but you're like, okay, I'm tired, I'm done here, it's not working, all right, I give up, right? But in reality, what you're doing is basically setting up the foundation, because basically, although you can't see the bamboo tree, in reality, it's sprouting and releasing all the roots to create a very strong foundation in those first five years. Then after that, in the first six weeks of growth, it will grow up to 90 feet, and that's why usually, whenever you hear like, hey, oh my gosh, he's a overnight success, he's like Kevin Hart, oh my gosh, he has, 200k subscribers, but in reality, I've been working since I was like 11 years old. <laughs> Kevin Hart has been a comedian for a very long time. Also, the point is this, okay? The whole point is this, okay? Whenever you're doing something, although you might not see results in the first few months or maybe the first few years, it doesn't mean you're not doing anything. It just means it's taking some time to get to what your goal is. And by the way, the author calls this 
the plateau of latent potential, meaning that you're doing something, it's working, you're not seeing it, so you might give up, but if you don't give up and you continue, that's when the results actually are going to come into play. Like a bamboo tree, in the first six weeks after those five years of seeing nothing, you'll have a 90 feet long bamboo tree. It's also kind of like an ice cube. By the way, I didn't know this either, but basically an ice cube does not melt unless it's around like 33 degrees. But if you're at 32 degrees, you're like, oh my gosh, it's not working. It's not working. Just keep working towards your goal. And eventually you'll crack that ice and get to what your goal actually is. That's the point. Okay. And the fourth thing that I actually learned is to basically Forget about setting up goals and to only focus on having great systems. Now, by the way, I've been doing this like automatically without actually knowing it. And although you might see, for example, Tommy, but you have a goal right here of 250 subscribers. Kind of like, yeah, that, that is true. But in reality, I'm not focused on that. I'm more focused on the system I'm actually building to actually get to that goal. By the way, it's very confusing, like at first when I read it, but it actually makes a ton of sense in reality. Say for example, your whole goal, your goal, your end goal is to go ahead and get straight A's in your class, right? But you have a terrible studying system, which basically means that, hey, I wanna get straight A's, that's my goal. But in reality, I went into the last day and that's when I start cramming every single word in my textbook. By the end of the year, you probably won't get all straight A's. But if you have a great system when it comes to studying, you'll get those grades automatically. Because basically, if you study every single night for like 30 minutes or an hour, by the end of the semester, when the tests actually come, you're gonna pass them because basically, you've been doing work the entire semester working towards those grades. So automatically, like the system, is going to give you the results you basically deserve. So a better system means better results. That's the core idea when it comes to like, hey, don't focus on goals that restrict you. Focus on the system that allows you to get the results you actually want to get. It's a very interesting way to think about it and I actually like it a ton and it makes a lot of sense. Now also, when you think about it on a deeper level, Whenever you set up goals, in reality, you're kind of like restricting your happiness. Usually, you set a goal and it's like, hey, I have this goal. Once I get that, I'll be happy. Once I get those A's, I'll be happy. Once I get 250K subscribers, I'll be happy. And then in reality, if you get that, you'll be happy momentarily. But if you don't get that, you'll be sad and automatically you'll be like, oh my gosh, I failed, right? But if you worry about the system, and just a system. It allows you to be happy during the entire process, okay? That's the goal. Having a goal is just a result of having a great system. So focus on the system, don't just focus on the goal. And that's why when I make YouTube videos, I don't focus on, hey, I wanna get this many views, or I wanna get a million views, or a million gajillion views. The answer is no. I focus on creating valuable content that actually helps me and helps you guys in some way. And in reality, if I do that enough, in reality, I'll get those results that I actually want to get by the end of the year. But I'm not focused on the, oh my gosh, the number. I'm focused on, hey, what is the system I actually want to create? In reality, it's great videos, great content, and great value every time I create a single video. That's the system that I have. The results will come because of that system. Now, number five, and the final thing I learned here, by the way, guys, I highly recommend this book if by this point you don't think so. Like, I highly recommend it. I'm gonna read this entire book page to page, although I already got the knowledge from it because basically the 80-20 rule, but I'm gonna read this entire book to get all the stories and to have like a better chance of remembering everything I asked you read. But the whole thing is that number five is basically the types of habits. Now, I'm not talking about like good and bad habits, that's different. I'm talking about basically the core foundation of how a habit actually works and the different types of habits. Now, by the way, you only really have two types. You have outcome-based habits and identity-based habits. Now, Tommy, what exactly does this mean? It means that basically when you have an outcome-based habit, the whole goal of that habit is to achieve an outcome. It makes sense, right? For example, I want to go to the gym to basically get 40 pounds off my stomach or 40 pounds off my weight, whatever it is, okay? That's my outcome. Now, basically, usually, after you get that outcome, what happens next is that basically, you go back into your normal habits and then usually, six months later, you're back again with those 40 pounds. Now, say for example, instead of focusing on the outcome, you focus on the identity, right? The identity of who you actually are as a person. So if you say, for example, well, I know I wanna lose weight, but in reality, who am I? as a person, if you say, hey, I want to be a healthy person. I am a healthy person. Well, in reality, it means that basically a healthy person 
exercises also eats healthy and does not go out there and fill their stomach with junk food. So in reality, you're going to get that result either way. So the whole goal is that basically start at the core, your identity and who you actually are as a person, then work towards the real, well, what do I do as this person that I actually am? I'm a healthy person, so what do I do next? Well, the action is basically I eat healthy and I basically go ahead and I also work out. What's gonna happen next is basically you get the outcome you actually want eventually, but once you get to that outcome, guess what happens? You don't stop because you don't stop being who you actually are. And that's the cool idea about starting out, hey, who am I, who do I want to be? And what you actually want is going to come either way. That's the core idea here. So basically, instead of saying like, hey, I want to read a book, say, hey, I want to be a reader. What would a reader do? A reader would go ahead and read books. That's the whole goal. I want to be healthy. What does a healthy person do? They go out there and they basically walk, they run, they exercise, and they basically eat healthy. And then guess what happens? Eventually, you will have a healthier body and also a healthier life. Start with who am I as a person and not, hey, what do I want? That's the core idea here. And that makes so much sense, but it didn't make that much sense until I actually read this book. It's about who you are, then what you do as that person, and then the results are going to come either way. It's a simple way of understanding exactly how you get progress when it comes to a habit and how you actually build one. But guys, aside from that, obviously this book right here contains a lot more information than five nuggets. It contains a vast variety of things you actually need to learn. So I highly recommend you go ahead and read this book right here. Actually, you know, by reading 21%, it's actually taught me a lot more than most of the books I actually read so far. So it says a lot. And by the way, once I'm done with this book, I'll definitely start jotting down things in the journals and that way I'll keep track of everything. And I'll also do like an update video to show you guys exactly how I did so far and how's everything going with this book. By the way, one thing I hate about this book is basically this, okay? I do not like this entire like cover thing. I, I can't stand this cover thing, I don't know why, it's just like, it's like, it's so flimsy. And when I'm reading the book, it kind of like gets in the way, so I have to take it off and now it's like there. So I wish like authors would consider just like, hey, just have it like the old fashioned way. Just like put the print right here. It might be more expensive, but in reality, like it's, it's a lot better, simple, and it's a lot more nice, sleek. But guys, overall, I highly recommend this book aside from the sleeve thing. I'll wear it like this for the end of the video. But the whole thing is that basically go ahead and read this book. And on top of that, also, if you want to get this book for free, free guys, just click my link down below to Audible and get this book and another book for free. And if you cancel, you still get to keep those two free books. It's free, okay? There's no way to lose. And guys, as always, if you guys like this video right here, well, like this video. And also, if you're new here, subscribe and hit the bell so you're notified. And if you want to talk to me one-on-one, -on -one, just DM me on Instagram type Bryson. Or for example, if you want to text me, well, just subscribe to my Patreon, link down below. And if you want to watch another video and a book review that I actually did on the 80-20 rule, watch this video right here. See you tomorrow. Thanks for watching. And as always, peace. I'll wear this like this from now on.